Hello, yesterday we talked about adding polynomials, and today we're going to subtract. So, just like with regular adding and subtracting, it's super, super similar. And there's one little difference when you are subtracting polynomials. Oh, didn't mean to use the highlighter. And that is that you have to change each term that's being subtracted to the opposite. That sounds a little complicated, but it's really not. And you're going to then rewrite with the like terms. This is just like a technique. You don't exactly have to do it this way. This is a technique that keeps everything easy to understand and makes it organized. So you can get it done quicker. Okay, so first step, change each term that's being subtracted to the opposite. So we've essentially got this polynomial and we're taking this one away from it, right? And so we're not just subtracting the first term right here. We're subtracting every single term. And so in order to account for that, you have to change this to plus, make this a negative, this a negative, and this also a negative. Okay, and so the best technique that seems to work pretty well is to just recopy the first one. Or in a lot of cases, it's already written and you don't have to really recopy it. And then as you write down the second one, just go ahead and match up the ones that are like terms. Remember, if they have the same variable and the same exponent. So we've got negative 4x squared, and just keep the symbol with it. Next we have negative 2x, and last we have negative 1. You can see that those all line up. Okay, so we end up with 5x squared minus 4x squared. Remember, the x squared stays the same, and just the coefficients are subtracted, because they tell you basically how many you have. So if we have 10 x's and we take away two of those x's, we have eight x's left. And if we have the number seven and take away one, then that's the number six. Okay, let's look at our next example. So since we're subtracting this whole thing, go ahead and just say plus negative, negative, negative. Now when we line it up, we're gonna put negative four x squared underneath the first term negative 5x. Now these ones are all in order. Sometimes they won't be in order. And so that's why you'll just have to kind of check that you have this, oops, that you have the same terms. And now we can do our adding. If we have 6x squareds and we take away four of them, we've got two left. And then if we have 9x's and take away five of them, we have four x's. And if we have a 10, take away eight, we have two. All right, next example. Go ahead and change your subtraction to add the opposite. <coughs> and so if it's already a subtraction, change it to an addition. If it's an addition, change it to a subtraction. And we're gonna recopy underneath. So we're gonna put the negative five x squared here, the positive seven x here, and then this negative two right here. If we have eight x squareds and take away five, we have three left. This is a little too fat. If we have three x's and add seven, we've got a total of 10 x's. If we have five and take away two, we get three. Okay. Remember, right off, as soon as you see that subtraction, change it to add the opposite. Opposite, opposite, okay. And now we're going to line up our like terms. Negative x squared plus two x. Well, plus negative four is really the same as minus four. We can write it like that, a little more concise. So if you have an x squared and you take away an x squared, you've got nothing, right? That's just zero. And if it's zero, you don't have to actually write it and then 7x plus 2x is 9x. Think of this as a negative 2 plus a negative 4, and you get negative 6. Or think of it as taking 2 away, and then you're taking 4 more, and all those together, you're taking away 6. All right, we're on to our last example. So change these to add the opposite. So we've got add the opposite, the opposite, the opposite. And this time, since our terms don't exactly match up, you might want to actually put this one underneath here. It doesn't really matter which one you put underneath. 
That way they're all lined up and you've got a place for everything. So we've got negative 3x squared and we have a 4x. Since there isn't a regular integer, we don't have to line anything up with that. Negative 2 plus negative 3 is negative 5. x squared. And then think of it as negative 5 plus 4. So we get negative 1. If it's negative 1, you don't actually have to write the 1. Generally in math, if you just see a variable, then it's automatically assumed that there's a 1 there. Because it's just 1x, right? And it's just sitting there. And then plus 12. All right, that's it for the notes. Good luck on the pod, and let me know if you have any questions. Talk to you later.